Well, we first noticed Finn was a little bit sick on the Thursday, which would have been the 21st of November. Um, a Thursday afternoon, he sort of started to have a bit of a runny nose and, um, uh, you know, just flu-like symptoms. But later that night, about midnight, he started to have some tremors. His body little would start to shake in sort of little bursts, which worried me, so we had the on-call doctors come. They came and uh, they said that he was, you know, had definitely sick, a viral infection or something like that, and we need to get him some antibiotics. And as the morning went on, he just got more miserable. He barely slept the entire night. I was up with him and um, he was just really, really miserable. And, you know, just on a scale we've never seen. And he, he doesn't complain, he, he never complained. Finn was looking, you know, pretty sick. Um, he was very quiet. He sort of looked, started to look a little bit greyer. Um, but again, was just very quiet, and I thought he was just, you know, we knew he was sick, we knew he was, you know, but we thought we were going to the hospital anyway, so if he got worse, it'd be okay. And um, we pulled over at Scarborough only probably 20 minutes later, um, and got him out of the car, and we noticed the first three bruise like marks on his forehead, which was the telltale sign of meningococcal. So I panicked in a rush and rushed him back to the car, and you know, everyone was telling me, it's okay, it's all right, Mike, it's not okay. <laughs> I thought I knew he was bleeding internally. I knew something was very seriously wrong. Um, so we all got in the car. We got to Redcliffe Emergency Department only seven minutes later. It was, you know, not that far from where we were. So we found there. We got in um, to Redcliffe. They took us out the back. Probably within 20 minutes to half an hour from being out the back, he was critical. Um, the bruises all over his body. Um, the rash. He had blood dripping from his eyes and his nose and his mouth, which was really um, hard to watch and see because you could do nothing. And that's the stage that we realised what we were dealing with and that it was meningococcal. That's when the word was brought up that I'd sort of said to the nurse, this isn't anything stupid like meningococcal, is it? And she just looked at me and just nodded her head and said, that's what we believe it is. We had the Royal Children's Hospital um, retrieval team from the paediatric ICU um, came to put Finn in a coma to make him more comfortable and take him back to the intensive care. We got up there and they, once they'd sort of put all the lines in that they needed to, that was, and they let us go in and see him and he was, oh, he just didn't even look like my little boy. It was all puffed up and swollen and the doctors had to tell us that it was a very real possibility that he wouldn't even make it through the night and that we had to accept that that was possibly the outcome that might happen. And, so we just got down and we, you know, kissed him and told him how much we loved him and to fight. We just kept telling him to fight. We just waited every time the door opened, you thought it was them coming in to tell you that he'd gone. Um, but being the strong-willed you know, little boy that he is, and he always was from birth, that he did fight. Um, I'm sure he could hear us. He wanted to come home, he wanted to come back. By well, the next day, only 24 hours later, you could see what was happening to his hands and feet. They were going all purple, and the next day they were even, you know, getting black. And um, not that long after that, they started to get that dry, um, their fingertips and, and his toes were more like um, raisins, you know, there was nothing left in there, and you, you knew what was going to happen. <laughs> He didn't want to accept it. I was, I was just hoping that it was only going to be his, his fingers and his toes. But um, after they were able to wake him up, and we went to theatre 15 times, um, and out of those 15 times, three times they did the amputation surgeries, and that started in December 24th on Christmas Eve. They had to amputate his um, left leg below the knee. And then three days later, on the 27th, they amputated his right hand through the, at the wrist and um, the entire index finger and most of the lengths off the other fingers. So I guess then that was our next um, struggle, was accepting what he'd lost. Um, but knowing that we still had him and that was the only thing we wanted, you know, wanted back was him and that he still has his life.
Everyone at the Royal Children's Hospital was just absolutely amazing. Um, they're wonderful, beautiful people that really care. Um, so we can't thank them enough. And we'd also, uh, the people that support the Children's Hospital Foundation, um, that do give the donations. And you are so very important to helping the hospital help us, people, families like us. So thank you.